every piece of research that we see from our research companies like Millwood Brown, Research International, uh, TNS, shows that those companies that invest in brands, particularly at the time of a recession, always come out of the recession stronger and well, so I shouldn't say always, most times come out of the recession stronger with stronger market shares and stronger profitability. The problem is they have to come on CNBC and be interviewed by you and others and they have to explain profit falls as they make those investments. I mean, if I can use an analogy from the media business, it strikes me that, that Rupert Murdoch is a very good example of somebody who, when times get, gets tough, get tough, invests in editorial, doesn't cut back on editorial, whilst his competitors are often cutting back to save money in the short term. Print media is, appears to be in the doldrums, or there are many print media that, um, that are on the brink of bankruptcy. It's being published around the world. What is your idea of the new type of media that will come well, out of this recession? Well, we, we, we're going, and I, I think, just go back to the analogy of, of Rupert Murdoch. He, he does not view his business as being the print business or the newspaper business. Some people say he very much in love with newspapers, and I'm sure he is, but that's not the totality of his business. He has Fox, uh, he has Fil Fox Film, he has Fox TV, he has Sky, he has pay TV, subscription TV, free-to-air television, outdoor billboard business in Russia. He's invested both geographically and functionally to diversify his business. And it goes back to the analogy that Theodore Levitt, the famous Harvard Business School professor, always used to say that the, the, the horse and trap business or the buggy whip manufacturer was not in the horse and trap business. They were in the transportation business. And when the railway came along, they had to think it, about their industry in the broadest possible terms. That's what we have to do. That's what a media owner has to do. And the one medium media company in one country is the one that's most vulnerable. I mean, a good example in the UK would be ITV. A good example of a company that has sought to diversify would be uh, Prime Minister Berlusconi's company in Italy, Mediaset, which has diversified in Italy, diversified outside Italy into Spain with La Cinco, the, the fifth television station, and has invested in Endemol in content to broaden the base. Very difficult to make those investments successfully and on a scale to dilute your core business, but I think directionally that's the way to go. You know, what I said before at the, at the conference here with uh, the people from Jupiter Drawing Room, if you look at the world and where the growth opportunities are, they are in Asia, they are in Latin America, they are in Africa and the Middle East, they are in Central and Eastern Europe, despite what's going on. <clears throat> Those parts of the world will come out of this recession better in my view, probably faster in some respects, and certainly more strongly than the more traditional parts of the world, the US and Western Europe. Back to print media, um, concentrating on, on its future, really, in, in the uh, media space. They, there was an article written by Ogilvy saying that when, when uh, radio, when TV came into play, radio um, advertisers didn't go and start advertising themselves on TV. And mm -hmm. what the problem, perhaps, with print media is they're moving on to online, and it's kind of confusing the audience. <coughs> well, I'm, <coughs> I'm not sure that it's confusing the audience. I think what happens is it's a natural evolution. You know, will television disappear? Free-to-air television? No. Cable's strong. Subscription TV, pay TV, particularly in the sports area and live and films, is strong. So free-to-air television won't disappear completely. Print, newspapers or magazines, will not disappear completely. Radio will not disappear completely. But the balance of power between old and new media is shifting. So new media generally around the world is about 10 to 12% of worldwide ad, ad spending. UK it's 20% because e-commerce is so powerful. Norway and Sweden last year surpassed television as the prime, the prime medium. Uh, in the UK this year, Google will be probably the biggest media owner. So there are shifts taking place. So instead of traditionally television being a third of the business, print magazines being a third, and other being a th media being a third, I think the way it's going to to, to level out, you and I spend 20% of our time supposedly online at the moment. We may start to increase our online time. So I think naturally online goes to about 20, 25% of the market. I think television pulls back to about 20 to 25. Print similarly around the same level and other media around the same level. So what's happening is a rebalancing in the marketplace. What's interesting about 2009 is that pricing 
there's so much inventory around in old media that pricing is coming down. And old media looks much more attractive on a relative price basis than it ever has done before. So ironically, despite the growth of new media and its relative attractiveness and the experimentation clients are doing with it, old media is becoming relatively more, more price competitive in this difficult time of 2009.